Hello, thanks for joining us on the Midday News. Let's begin here in Lagos, where the suspended governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, has been granted bail of 20 million naira with one surety in like sum after spending six weeks in custody of the Department of State Services. Mr. Emefiele earlier pleaded not guilty to two counts of illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. The lead defense counsel, Joseph Daudu, applied to move the bail application for the federal government opposed to the application labeling Mr. Emefiele a flight risk with capacity to intimidate witnesses. Justice Nicholas Awebo of the Federal High Court in Lagos eventually ruled that Godwin Emefiele be released on bail and adjourned the case to 14th of November. Let's get more on this developing story. TVC News correspondent Kemi Foladiemo joins me on the news. Kemi, uh, from the Federal High Court. Kemi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, bring us up to speed with the latest development from the courts as regards Godwin and Mayfield's uh, trial. Uh, Kemi, let me quickly confirm whether you can hear me. I can hear you now. Let's take it over. Great. Uh, so bring us up to speed with the latest development from the courts as regards Godwin and Mayfield. All right, uh, uh, Kemi, uh, I'll, I'll try to see whether you can hear me. Uh, what more do we know about the Godwin M.F. Uh, trial in court? All right, apologies, uh, Elia Ibrahim. We're trying to get things ready from our end. As you can see, it's a very fluid story. Yes, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele, has been granted bail just moments ago by the court, uh, Justice Nicholas Oweibo after he had pleaded not guilty to two counts of alleged illegal gun possession. But while journalists from various media houses are awaiting uh, him to come out and be handed over to the Nigeria Correctional Service from the custody of the DSS, there are said to be new developments there are set to be a new development on the matter now. We understand that the lawyers for Mr. Emefiele are still in court trying to get a formal hearing from the court after it had already sat, giving bill to the accused. We understand that the lawyers now want to plead with the judge to grant them audience on allegations that the DSS is planning to re-arrest him again. Now let me try to bring some context to this new de development. He... That's the CBN governor over the past 46 days has been in the custody of the DSS. He was presented in court today to answer to the charges preferred against him by the federal government and he pleaded not guilty to those charges. His lawyer, Joseph Daudu, a senior advocate of Nigeria, had applied after bail was granted that he be taken away from the custody of the DSS and transferred to the correctional center, the regular correctional center, pending the fulfillment of his bill conditions. And the judge acceded to that request, despite an objection by the federal government's counsel, who said they still wanted him in the DSS custody because they were investigating him on other alleged crimes. But the court nullified that argument and ordered that he be transferred to the correctional center pending the fulfillment of his bill conditions. And so now we are seeing officials from the correctional center as well as officials of the DSS still standing outside the court. So we don't know what is happening. Talking about us journalists, we don't know what is happening. And on account of what we have heard um, by lawyers for the defendant of camera who say that they have heard authoritatively that the DSS still insists on taking Mr. Emefiele back into its own custody for other alleged offenses. Ibrahim. All right. Help us understand what the lead defense counsel, Joseph Dowdy of the DSS, you know, said, meant when he said that uh, um, Godwin Emefiele is a flight risk with the capacity to intimidate witnesses. Do you understand what it was trying to advance there? 
Right, Ibrahim. So these were arguments that played out during the hearing of Ms. Emifele's bail application, but that argument was presented by the Federal Government's Council. Of course, the Defense Council, which is led by Mr. Joseph Daudu, a senior advocate of Nigeria and former president of the Nigeria Bar Association, had said this is a renowned uh, lawyer, a banker, I should say, that we are talking about. Mr. Emifele was, of, of course, uh, when Nigerians are aware, a former uh, suspended uh, governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and he said he cannot be said to be a flight risk. If the court granted, and the court eventually granted, that his passport be deposited here in its registry. But the federal government gave a very strong, vehement objection to the bail application, which was oral, by the way, having not been able to file a, an affidavit in objection to the bail application. So it was the federal government's arguments that Mr. Emifele is a flight risk and had the tendency of um, intimidating its witnesses. But the court didn't buy any of those arguments profile by the federal government and instead ordered that Mr. Emifele be granted bail in the sum of 20 million naira and he's also to present a, a, a surety in like sum and the surety is also to um, you know, uh, be one of um, reputable means whose property must also be located within the jurisdiction of the court and like I said earlier on Mr. Emifele's passport has been ordered to be deposited within the uh, registry of the federal high court and the court added that if he doesn't have a passport, he would have to swear to an affidavit as saying that he indeed doesn't have one. The case has now been adjourned to November the 14th for trial to begin formally. Well, just to put the uh, correct um, um, information you know, out there, the lead counsel, the uh, defense counsel is Joseph Daudu, and then the federal government, just like you said, is the one that is claiming that uh, Emifile poses a flight risk. So... Uh, has the capacity to intimidate witness. Keep close tabs on these for us, uh, uh, Kemi Foladiemo, as it continues to emerge and unfold. Thank you.